Hello my schoolers, welcome to my school channel. My name is Alexandra. So in this channel, we'll be tackling the jump pass question for the subject literature in English year 2017. Please don't go anywhere, stay with us because we'll be right back. channel so in this video clip we'll be attempting question 1 to 22 now let's begin with question 1 this question is based on Richard Wright's native song the story is narrated using the option A omniscient option B limited omniscient option C objective option D first person now the answer to this question is omniscient but first let's start with the definition of all of this now, when we talk about um, point of view, point of view is a way in which the writer uh, writes or narrates a story. We have three points of view. We have the first person point of view, the second person point of view, and the third person point of view. Now, when we talk about the first person point of view, we're talking about or we see the use of I and we, the pronoun I and we. When we look at the second person point of view, we see pronouns like you, yours. Now, when we look at the third person point of view, we see e, she, they, okay, as the pronoun used. But there are types of um, third person point of view. There are three types. We have the third person subjective, the third person objective, and the third person omniscient. Now, let me start with the third person objective. What does it mean? Third person objective, the narrator does not know any character. It does not know the feelings or the thoughts of any of the characters. And he uses um, expressions like, he looked tired. He seemed angry. So we do not know exactly how the character feels, or the narrator does not tell us exactly how the character feels because the narrator does not understand or know the thoughts of the character he uses. Now let's look at the second one, which is the third person subjective, which is also called limited or mini sense. Now in this case, the narrator knows only one character, and he uses expressions like, he was tired, he was angry, so this gives us the impression that, okay, yes, this narrator knows just a particular character and knows the feeling or the thought of a particular character. Now, the third one is the omniscience or the third person omniscience, option A. Now, this, in this kind of um, narration, the, the, the narrator knows all of its character. Okay, so it's omniscience means all-knowing. So we can easily explain the meaning of this, um, the character knowing all the characters in a story. And you see expression like, he was angry, he was tired, he didn't want to tell his mother, but when he told his mother, his, his mother was calm. So the narrator knows the feeling of the boy and knows the feeling of the mother also. So the narrator is all-knowing. Okay, so option A is the correct answer of this question because when you read the text, we see that we know the thoughts and the feelings of all of the characters. We know what Big Guy is thinking, we know what Vera is thinking, we know what the mother is thinking. Even from the very first page of the text, the, the narrator is all-knowing. Okay, so option A is the correct answer to this question. Question 2. The mood of Peter's The Panic of Growing Older can be described as Option A, sober. Option B, boastful. Option C, defiance. Option D, language. The answer to this question is Option A, sober. What does sober mean? It means to be solemn, calm, thoughtful. Option B, boastful, means excessive pride. Option C, defiance, means open resistance or open disobedience. Okay, option D, language, which means to not be in a hurry or to be relaxed to be calm, okay? So the answer to this question is option A, sober. Why? Because when you read this poem, it captures the states, the, the states we fall into when we realize that our dreams have not been materialized or we've not accomplished our purpose or our set objectives. We fall into the state of despair, hopelessness, and all of that. So when you read this poem, you become um, sober, thoughtful, okay? We become solemn, we, we are serious. We are trying to get the message the writer is trying to pass across to us. So 
overall feeling is that of seriousness, of, of calmness, we are solemn, we are thoughtful. Okay, so option A is the correct answer to this question. Question three. This question is based on Frank Ogodo's Ogbeche's Avest of Corruption. Trust me, my duty is to convince her to play ball with him and then the usual commission keeps rolling in. She gets. The speaker in this excerpt above is option A, Alo, option B, Ogei, option C, Odili, option D, Ochole. Now, the answer to this question is option D, Ochole. She said the statement or made the statement in page 13 of this text and she said this to Madam Hoa. Now, in this context, she tells Madam Hoa that she would convince um, Alo to play along with Chief in order to ensure that our commission keeps rolling in or as usual she will get our commission in return so option d is the correct answer to this question question four the bees are buzzing and humming with great zest the doves are cooing the children chatter as they clatter downstairs to come and double in the cool system use the exact above to answer the question below the predicament sound device in the extract is Option A, assonance. Option B, consonance. Option C, onomatopoeia. Option D, alliteration. Now, the answer to this question is onomatopoeia. Now, onomatopoeia is the formation of words associated with sound. Now, when we talk about buzzing and humming, chatter, clatter, these are formation of words associated with sounds. Okay, so that's the answer to this question. However, assonance has to do with vowel sounds or the repetition of vowel sounds um, in a poem. And the line of a poem. Option B, consonants. Consonants has to do with the repetition of consonant sounds. Now, this can appear in the middle or at the end of a word in a line of a poem. But then when we look at alliteration, alliteration is the repetition of consonant sounds at the beginning of the word. Okay, so this alliteration is at the beginning of the word, but then consonants can fall at the middle or at the end of the word. So the repetition of consonant sounds anywhere in the line of a poem, that's consonants. consonants. But the answer to this question is onomatopoeia, option C. Question 5. Piano and drums, according to Okara's piano and drums, are musical instruments of dash. Option A, contradictory tunes. Option B, complementary tunes. Option C, different cultural milieus. Option D, different rhythmic appeals. The answer to this question is option C, different cultural milieus. Now, this poem is symbolic with the title symbolizing or representing something else. Now, the piano, for example, symbolizes the Western culture and the drum symbolizes the African culture. So option C, therefore, is the correct answer to this question. Question six, a poem that describes the simple life of rural people is called Dash. Option A, elegy. Option B, ode. Option C, lyrics. Option D, pastoral. The answer to this question is pastoral. Pastoral is a poem that talks about the fantasy of having to withdraw or deviate from the modern life, modern living, to live in a rural setting. Okay, so option D is the answer to this question. However, elegy talks about, um, is a lamentation for the dead. Ode is a poem that is used to address someone or something. Lyrics are words that make up a song. So from my explanation and definition, option D is the correct answer to this question. Question seven. This question is based on William Shakespeare's Othello. Fathers, from ends trust not daughters mind by what you see them act is there not charms by which the property of youth and maidhood may be abused? In the excerpt, it is implied that daughters are option A, lascivious, option B, petty, option C, pretentious, option D, thieves. The answer to this question is option C, pretentious, from the word pretend. Now, this statement was made in page 6 of this text by Brabancho, and he made his statement on hearing that his daughter has eloped with Othello. Now, what this statement means is fathers should not trust their daughter, especially when they act or look innocent, um, act or look obedient and innocent. And it says, are there magic that can cause young virgins to go astray? So in this statement, it's telling us that our daughters or daughters are pretentious. They pretend, okay? And they should not be deceived by their, their pretense or pretentious um, behavior or act. Option C, therefore, is the correct answer to this question. Question 8. How many stanza and lies does William Morris' poem The Proud King has? Option A, 
19 stanzas and 849 lines. Option B, 109 stanzas and 849 lines. Option C, 109 stanzas and 850 lines. Option D, 109 stanzas and 850 lines. The answer to this question is option A, 119 stanzas and 849 lines lines now okay, so this poem is a very long poem and it talks about a proud king which is similar to the story of king nebuchadnezzar in the bible now this story talks about how a proud king was eventually humbled by the almighty god so option a is the correct answer to this question question nine one of the thematic preoccupations of our owners the anvil and the emma is option a clash of cultures option b Revival of colonialism, option C, the changing face of colonial masters, option D, the good attributes of colonialism. The answer to this question is option A, clash of culture. Now, this is the main theme or the theme that preoccupies the poem. Now, in this poem, we'll look at the clash of cultures and how it results into cultural mixture and then leading to a change in the norms and the values and the general way of living or lives of the people. So option A is the correct answer to this question. Do not forget to take practice questions with our simulated jam CBT pass questions. All you need to do is you click on the link in the description below. It takes you to the My School website. There you can download My School mobile app for your Android phones, or you can download My School software for your computers and laptops. Please go ahead and download and start practicing for your upcoming examination. Now, moving on to question 10. This question is based on bio. At Debo Ali's lonely days. The cup picking ceremony is to option A break the strong will of Yaremi. Option B make Yaremi remarry. Option C establish that she is wicked. Option D prove that Ajumobi is not the best. The answer to this question is make Yaremi remarry. Now the old of chapter eleven entails the car picking ceremony, which was actually meant for Yaremi. Okay, so cups are placed on the table with which um, symbolizes different attributes that the men possess and then you pick a cup and you pick a particular attribute that your man will possess or will have so this is to make Yaremi remarry and then maybe eventually soften out okay so option b is the correct answer to this question if you were enjoying this content do not forget to hit the like button click on the subscribe button and tap on the bell notification to get informed as soon as we release the next videos Question 11. A poem used to express grief on the occasion of someone's death is dash. Option A, elegy. Option B, epic. Option C, dirge. Option D, sonnet. The answer to this question is quite controversial because of the similarity in the definition between option A and C, elegy and dirge. Because both has to do with lamentation and both has to do with or is associated with the dead. Okay, but then we're going to be using the definition that is the founding definition to answer this question. So option A, elegy. Elegy is a serious reflection, usually a lament for the dead. Option B, epic. Epic narrates the deed and the adventures of legendary figures or heroic figures. Option C, dirge. Dirge is a song or a lament that expresses grief or expresses mourning for the dead. Option D, sonnet. Sonnet is a poem of 14 lines. Now, for my explanation, or the definition rather, we will settle for option C, dirge, because it has to do with expressing grief, expressing mourning for the dead. Option C, therefore, is the correct answer to this question. Question 12. This question is based on Frank Ogodo's Obeche's Harvest of Corruption. SCP Yakubo in his office. How can this old crook of a judge acquit and discharge a very clear case of cocaine pushing? What evidence is he looking for? The technique used in the exit above is called option A, interior monologue, option B, apostrophe, option C, dramatic monologue, option D, soliloquy. Now the answer to this question is soliloquy. We can find this statement in page 53 of this text and it was made by ACP Yakubu. Okay, it was soliloquizing, and what does it mean to, to soliloquize? It means to, for a character to express his thoughts aloud, regardless of the years. So, the answer to the question is option D. However, interior monologue is applicable in novels, dramatic monologue is applicable in poems. Okay, when we talk about apostrophe, apostrophe is a figure of speech. 
it, it is just when we address something as though they are living, as though they are present, okay? And then, so look who is applicable in plays or drama. So option D is the correct answer to this question. Question 13. And blossoms blown away. The line above from William Blake's poem, the schoolboy is an example of option A, personification, option B, euphemism, option C, alliteration, option D, consonance. The answer to this question is alliteration. Okay, when we talk about personification, we give inanimate objects living attributes. Euphemism is using a polite expression in place of wor a words that are unpleasant. Alliteration is a repetition of consonants at the beginning of a word in a line of a poem. Consonance is a repetition of consonant sign which can be at the middle or at the end of um, words in a line of a poem. Now when we take a look at this statement, this line rather expression we see and blossom boo. And another blown boo, another um, boo sound. Okay, so it has been repeated at the beginning of this uh, of the of the word, and so therefore it is alliteration. Now when you read this poem, you realize that the word blossom here means okay, flower. Okay, so Blake has refused to use flower and has used a uh, blossom instead. Now, this is to show the beauty of um, alliteration or the use of alliteration. So, option C is the correct answer to this question. Question 14. Who succeeded Otello as governor of Cyprus? Option A, Cassio. Option B, Iago. Option C, Montano. Option D, Graziano. Now, the answer to this question is option A, Cassio. We can find this in page 111. Act 5, scene 2. Option A, therefore, is the correct answer to this question. Question 15. A character whose name is also the source of the title of the narrative is called Dash. Option A, round. Option B, eponymous. Option C, flat. Option D, titled. The answer to this question is option B, eponymous. So, eponymous character is a character whose name is the same with the title of the story, play, or the narrative in general. When we talk about round characters, round characters are characters that have complex personality, characters are dynamic, their behavior or characters changes throughout the course of the story. But when we talk about flat, flat characters are characters with little or no complex personality. So the answer to this question is eponymous, eponymous character. Example of this is Othello. Othello by William Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare. We see that the title of the text is the same with the uh, major characters in the text. So option B is the correct answer to this question. Question 16. The question is based on Amada Cole's faceless. The dominant tone of the novel is, of, is one of option A, bitterness, option B, hope, option C, fear, option D, joy. The answer to this question is bitterness. The novel is a tragedy. The tragedy of baby T and we see that the expression in this novel is about the mystery surrounding the death of baby T so therefore the best answer to this question is option a bitterness question 17 this question is based on frank ogodo which is harvest of corruption it can be deduced from the play that option a drug pushing is lucrative option b no crime will go unpunished Option C, the world they also cry. Option D, people will always complain. Now, the answer to this question is option B, no crime will go unpunished. From this question, um, we've been asked to give a summary of what we've learned or the lesson from the text. Now, from the, the title of the text, Harvest of Corruption, it gives this, it paints a picture of people um, reaping what they sow or being punished for their crimes. Now, in this text, we see characters who engaged or got themselves involved in corrupt activities um, getting punished at the end of the text okay so option b is the correct answer to this question question 18 this question is based on general literary principle myth differ from legend in that myth Option A, have more of historical background and less of supernatural. Option B, are less concerned with moral didactism. Option C, are more concerned with moral didactism. Option D, have less of historical background and more of the supernatural. The answer to this question is option D. But first and foremost, let's explain the concept of myth and legend. When we talk about myth, myth is a traditional story. Legend is also a traditional story, but then myth is a traditional story that explains how certain things 
come into existence or come into being. Okay, it explains natural occurrence. Okay, examples why lizards nod their head, why turtles have a rough shell and all of those natural existence. This story explains existence. Okay, it is not true. They are highly fictional. We don't have evidence to back up the story. They are not factual. They are just stories that are fictional. They are imaginary. Okay, that is myth. So when we talk about legends, legends are traditional stories about people, about ancient times and events and places, okay? This story has some evidence, but these facts are really exaggerated. They are extremely exaggerated, okay? So, but there are evidence found that prove their existence, but they are majorly um, exaggerated. So that's the difference between myth and legend. Now, we can see the option D clearly defines a myth. Okay, I have less of historical background and more of supernatural, okay? It goes further, it talks about supernatural things, but I have less of historical background. When we talk about historical background, related to us, associated with um, legend. But for um, myth, we're, look we're looking at supernatural. Okay, so option D is the correct answer to this question. However, B and C is applicable. When we talk about moral didactism, Okay, didactic is to uh, teach moral lesson. It is applicable in myth and legend. Okay, so option D is the correct answer to this question. Question 19. This question is based on Richard Wright's native song. This novel can be described as option A, satirical, option B, metaphysical, option C, paradoxical, option D, allegorical. Now, the answer to this question is satirical. When we talk about satire, satire criticizes a society, a government, or anything in general. Okay, when you take a look at this novel, it criticizes a racist society, a society that discriminates, and all of that. So option A is the correct answer to this question. However, metaphysical is a branch of philosophy that studies the fundamental of reality or the relationship between the mind and matter. Paradoxical is a statement that contradicts itself. Option D, allegorical is a picture, an idea that explains or gives a broader or reveals a broader message or a hidden message. So option A is the correct answer to this question. Do you have questions you would like to ask? You can ask your question by using the link in the description below. Click on this link. It takes you to the My School website. There you can ask as many questions as possible and solutions will be provided to you within a short period of time. Now moving on to question 20. In Maurice the Proud King, Jovianan assembled the throne when he was option A poor, B rich, C young, D old. The answer to this question is option C young. We can find this in line 8 of this very poem and it states, as I quote, young was when he first sat on the throne. Okay, so the answer to this question is option C young. Do you have better step explanation or solutions to any of those questions? If yes, feel free to use the comment section below, indicate the question and the solutions you would like to share. Question 21. This question is based on William Shakespeare Othello. Though I do hate him as I do pains, yet for necessity of present life, I must show out a flag and sign of love, which is indeed but sign. The speaker of this exact above can be described as option A, trusting, option B, a concubine, option C, a schema, option D, ambitious. The answer to this question is a schema. A schema is one who is involved in making secret plans. Okay, this statement was made by Iago in page 5, Act 1, Scene 1. And what it means is, okay, I ate Otello, but I must not show it. I must show him love in this present time, but I have eating plans. So this eating plan is not pleasant, very bad, okay? So option C is the correct answer to this question. Question 22, where gorillas walk the land, why crocodiles soft? The line above in Alwell's The Dining Table signifies dash. Option A, danger. Option B, calmness. Option C, pity. Option D, sadness. The answer to this question is danger. Now, this poem talks about the suffering of the people during um, war, and this line um, expresses the, the fighting oppositions. Okay, so the answer to this question is option A, danger. We've come to the end of the segment, and I believe you enjoyed every bit of it. Please do not forget to hit the like button, click on the subscribe button, and tap on the bell notification to get informed as soon as we release the next videos.